Hello world, how are you doing? It's Angelot, and right now I want to put some dots on the map. Putting dots on a map is one of the simpler things you can do with D3JS and geospatial data, so this video shouldn't be very long. I'm going to put the dots on the screen with D3 and use Leaflet via the Mapbox.js library uh, to make the map. So this is one of the simpler things we can do. It's just not that much code involved. Uh, it did take a little bit of figuring out from a, a couple different tutorials, um, uh, kind of a nice consistent way of doing this. There are some trade-offs, I'll talk about those, but um, let's just get started. So I've already made this one. I want to live code this for you so we can go through the, the process of, of what it took to get here. Um, so to do that, I'm going to check out the gist to get the data. So we have our dots.csv. I'm just going to go to this raw page. Um, going to copy this data. Just a CSV file of latitudes and longitudes that you don't have to worry about where I got it from. You know, it's nothing sinister. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to go to block builder and here I have a fresh block I can work with. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all this boilerplate because I don't want it. Uh, I'm not going to need this SVG. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm just going to say this is dots on a map video one, let's say. I'm going to make it private because it doesn't need to show up in my gallery, but I'll put the link in the video description so you can check out the code exactly as we make it today. And I want to make this data file. So I'm going to create a file. I'm going to call it dots.csv. Hit enter. Paste in my data. So my data is here. All right, go here. First thing I'm going to do is just make sure I have access to the data. d3.csv, dots.csv, function and data. So I'm going to console.log data. So we're going to see here our CSV of latitudes and longitudes. They are strings though because they came from a CSV, so we'll have to deal with that shortly. But let's go ahead and start with the Mapbox related stuff. I'm going to go ahead and switch into side by side mode, drag this out a little bit, All right. and I'm going to make a div. ID is going to be map, and we're going to make the map have position absolute, the width is going to be 100%, height is going to be 100%, and let's see what else will we do. Well, we need to load the Mapbox library. Now, what I'm going to do is go back here to this block. And we're just going to pull pieces from it. So in this block, you notice I've linked um, to this tutorial, which was I found very useful in figuring out um, how to do this in a simple, consistent way. And it's, it's sort of an evolution on Mike's classic D3 leaflet uh, post that I think is a little bit simpler. Uh, it is missing one little thing I'll point out um, shortly. So, but, you know... I tell this to people all the time, copy-paste is your friend. I mean, there is such thing as being original, but when you're learning, I think it's really useful to just copy-paste, see what works, mess with it, change it, break it, poke it, prod it, and um, eventually, once you've copy-pasted enough times, you'll just copy-paste to save time <laughs> instead of uh, to figure things out. So, anyway... Um, we have these, we have Mapbox available now. Also, I set up a access token in mapbox.com, which you can do too. I think, you know, I'm not paying for anything. If you reuse this one for now, it's whatever. But if you want to make your own production map in, in your project, product, project, whatever, you just want to sign up. It's free. I'm not sure what their usage terms are. This is just so we can get the tiles. Um, I, I like using this simple pencil style just to for the illustration of this example. And I'm also going to 
copy this part and we even copy the comments because this just sets up the map and I'll go through these these options so we're giving it the name of our div which is this or the ID then we're telling it what style we want so this is the way Mapbox sets it up so it's not quite as simple as the leaflet thing I mean sorry it's a little sim more simple than the leaflet thing because Mapbox has some built-in styles see our, our map shirt up here I've also set some options on the max zoom and min zoom levels so we can't zoom out past here and we can't zoom in past this level now if if we didn't have these well we can try that let's delete that we can zoom out way further I'm not sure how much further in we can zoom let's try it out going in going in oh so close oh wow, the pencil lines get really detailed um, so but I'm going to leave that there just for the sake of this demo so you know about those it, it was useful for some project where this is by the way is London um, you know something I'm working on so we've set the view to a, a latitude and longitude point which is pretty much the center of London and the initial zoom level is 15 which is just you know close to the, the min zoom so like we're almost zoomed out as far as we can go you can zoom out one more level alright so we have our map we have our data um, the key thing that we're gonna wanna do is basically add an SVG layer on top of our map that we can use to um, place our visualization so again you know I did this from the tutorial uh, this is used in both of those tutorials basically we we create an SVG layer by selecting the overlay pane which Mapbox and Leaflet provide um, and then uh, attaching this class to it so that um, Leaflet can treat it a certain way give it, it ends up giving it position absolute and some other things um, so now we have our SVG and we have a group inside it where we will do all of our visualization on top and that will become important shortly when we um, try to zoom and pan around with our data and, and we'll, we'll show that so now that we have our group I think we might as well go ahead and start trying to put some circles on the screen so you might think alright we'll take our G we'll select all of the circle uh, circles we'll bind our data to it and then we'll do enter oops and what do we want to append the circle we don't really need to give them any classes right now and then let's and let's actually do this I like to save my selections if you watch any of my other videos you'll notice that I do this a lot so this way we select all the circles, we have our dots, we enter our dots, and then we can set attributes on our dots, um, like CX. And I'm just going to hard code um, CX to 100, and give them a radius of 5. So now we see our dot we have a bunch of dots for each um, point in our data set. They're obviously not geolocated, right? They're not. They're all at 100, 100. Uh, if we move around, they, they do stay there, but um, that's not where they actually are. So what we want to do is we want to project our dots into the same projection as the Mapbox map. So again, we can copy some handy code. The, the key point is this. Um, so I'm going to, well, I'll copy this, this here. So we're going to make a function, which we can do up here, maybe closer to our map, project. And LL will be um, the data point that we want. And we're just going to return point. Sometimes I do this so I can do something like console.log points. When we call it, we can see what happens. 
Now, there's a couple of things going on here, though. LL needs to be passed in here. And let's actually do this as lat long. Lat long. And this should be an array with a lat long coordinates. But if you remember our data points, um, I should pull this out a little bit. Let's let's show our data points again. Our data points are objects that have lat and long like that. So let us turn that into um, an array, and we'll say lat long dot lat lat long dot long. And these need to be numbers, not strings. So we'll go ahead and use the plus convention, which is a shortcut for turning something into a number. Let's clear this stuff out. And let's just test it out. Uh, one thing I might do is console.log um, eject data 0 or 9. So here you see it did actually. Um, return a point with an x and y uh, for these these two. So that's good news. Let's try projecting all the points and seeing if they show up on the map like we expect. So here we should just be able to do project d dot x. Uh, let's not log out all the points. Hey, we are seeing a bunch of x coordinates. That's good news. Let's remove this, project d dot y. All right, so it's interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's clear this. So let's take a look real quick. At what might be happening. So we inspect and we see this circle. We see a bunch of other circles actually, but none of them are showing up or being rendered in the screen. And even if we pan, pan around, the ones that should be showing up aren't showing up. Now this is because we need to appropriately size and position our SVG. And this is a, another place where we'll do a little bit of copy pasting. So the key here is I'm going to copy all of this and then we're going to go through what's going on in that. So I'm going to place this between where we enter and update here because we need to position and size our SVG so it's matching the view box, the bounding box of the current map layout. And then we're going to need to do it every time the zoom changes. So let's, let's take a first look at this, though. So what's happening is we're getting the bounds of the map, right? And let's console.log all of these things. Bounds, top, left, bottom, right. So this is all based off of um, Mapbox API. So our bounds here are in latitude and longitude. So that's, you know, like whatever the latitude and longitude of this corner is and this corner. And then we're converting it to pixels so we can get our pixels. Then we're going to style our map to be the same width and height as, as the, um, or our SVG to be the same width and height as the map. So let's say we comment out all this stuff and see, first of all, what happens. So that's great. We get our dots on the map. And then we bring this back. They're still in the same place. So this stuff is going to matter. Because right now, if you remember, the top left x and y was 0, 0. But as we start moving things around, we'll notice that there should be actually more points here all around, but, but we're only getting the points in the original bounding box. So 
these two things where we move the SVG along with the map and then we translate the group where we projected things along with the map um, are going to matter. Actually, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that, that's right. Yeah. So let's go, let's do this. An easy way to do it is we just say, we just wrap this stuff, which is the update part of things, right? Like this stuff is updating, and here we're updating the, the attributes of our dots in the function. I'll just call it render. You can also call it, you know, it might just, well, I'll just call it update. And we'll wrap this stuff. And there's two events that we can listen to. Well, first of all, we have to just call render now in order to. Uh, doesn't like that. What did I do? Oh yeah, we can call render. Call the update. So now we have our initial updating, but we want to do map dot on view reset update. So it's just going to call the update function and map that on move update. So when we move, it should, oh, it's not liking that. Uh, what's going on? It should have a console error. Cannot read object call undefined. So let's try it this way function update. Oh, I think that's what it was. I just had a typo, sorry. So these are equivalent, let's just leave it that way. So now as we're updating, we're seeing all the dots, but let's let's take a look at what the DOM is really doing. So we have our SVG and we have our group. And see how the group is translated? So as we move, it's moving the group along with the SVG um, to correspond with how much we've moved in the, the map. I know it's a little bit confusing, um, but it does work. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a better way to outline how these two things relate. But it's sort of like if, if the SVG is shifting this way because you're dragging it, right? Then we move the group in the opposite way to, so that you're always looking at, um, so there's always a box that you can see the dots um, that are in the right position. I don't think I'm helping here. Anyway, um, this right here is also encapsulated in, and I think there's some people that have made some libraries for D3 plus uh, leaflet um, you can just copy paste this and know it will work and know that whenever you draw something on your SVG and the projected coordinates, they'll show up on the screen. Um, you can play with all this to, to try to understand it more deeply, but the idea is keep things in the right place all the time. And if we zoom in, it still works. If we zoom out, it still works. So, yeah, that's pretty much dots on the map. Um, I think I'm going to leave it here. Save this so that I can share this link with you. You'll notice that this works as well on this, you know, the, the typical block size since we're using 100% width and height, and the SVG is programmatically getting styled to the right size, or it will work in full screen mode. We have our whole screen dedicated to this map and that's about it so hopefully this helps I'm gonna try to put a couple more videos as I play with these dots do uh, other interesting things so see you in the next one later